Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you're doing great. I have little Gracie with me tonight. For a little while, anyway. She probably won't stay. Well, tonight I want to read Matthew 24 and just kind of talk about things that are going on, the things that we see that are going on every day. Just kind of visit about that. We think we're headed. I think she's decided to take a nap. She, I don't think she likes to look at herself. Do you like to look at yourself? Here? Yeah, you're so cute. She's so cute. I tell you what, she is a cuteness overload. <laughs> look at that. All right, well, let's, I hope you had an awesome Monday. I had an awesome Monday. I made homemade soup tonight. It's really a lot like how my mom used to make it, but I add a few extra ingredients to kind of like, I go through the refrigerator and what can be cleaned out and put in the soup. I put it in there. Anyway, it was really good. Um, well, she's leaving. She's out of here. Yeah, she's out of here. All right. So then I'm going to turn my camera back around and move my chair up a little bit. There we go. All right. I'll get more in the center of my screen, except for Facebook can't do it because it covers up my other camera. So I ordered me a new camera today. So maybe that won't be a problem anymore, I hope. Anyway, um, I wanted to read Matthew 24. I've been thinking about it a lot, about all the things that are going on. There's so, so many things that are going on. Just constantly, these tornadoes that happened this weekend um, affected five to six states, many, many deaths, um, many people still missing. It's just really sad and heartbreaking. But in that sadness and heartbreak, we find Jesus. We find the hands and feet of Jesus. We find the loving of Jesus. We find praying people, praying for these people in the midst. So let's um, go to God in prayer and then we'll read that. Uh, we'll probably read what I wrote on Facebook this morning, trying to get back to my usual routine. I've had a very busy weekend. Had a good weekend, but it's been a very busy one. There. So I'm going to read this and find it. There it is. I really like this song that I shared called Kingdom Come. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. I probably won't be on here for very long. I don't think probably about 30 minutes. Let's pray. God, we just thank you. Thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control. And we just thank you, God, that you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm, that you are our strength and our refuge, God. We thank you because you are mighty and powerful and magnificent. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truths. You are loving and kind and compassionate and caring. There is no God like you. You are trustworthy. You are faithful. You are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. 
And God, we just pray for the lost. God, we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to uh, draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray that they would um, remember the relationship that they once had and that they would return and repent and be reconciled. God, we pray for all these people, Kentucky, so many different states, Kentucky, Arkansas. I can't, I don't even know what states. I've seen a lot on Kentucky. I've seen um, mostly on Kentucky, God, all these people that are looking for people or thankful that they are still alive and the missing God. We just lift up these states to you and the people in them, these communities, God. This one community that was just blown pretty much away in Mayfield, Kentucky, God. We just pray for these people. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for whatever they're going through, God, that you would just meet their needs, that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. God, I just pray. I just pray, God, that you would um, be with them, that they would feel your presence, God, that if they've been injured, God, that you would give them healing. We pray for all these other things that have happened, some of them senseless tragedies, God. At a vigil, um, somebody went by and, and shot people. One person died and like 13 were injured. 11 to 13 were injured. Maybe 14, I don't remember, God. There's just so much of this that goes on. But I know that you are drawing your children back to you, God. And I know that some of these things are meant to draw your children back to you. Some of them are meant to draw people to Jesus for salvation. So, God, we just lay all these things at your feet. And we just pray that you would be with all these people that have been involved in all these senseless tragedies and other tragedies that have happened, God. We just pray that if they've lost loved ones, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. And that you would just, uh, they would feel your presence, God. We pray for other people that have lost loved ones, God, either through sickness or other reasons, God. We just pray that you would uh, give them peace, comfort, and strength also. And we pray for healing for people that are sick, God. I'm thinking of two ladies that I want to lift up tonight, God. Just pray for healing for them. And I want to thank you for the good, the good uh, events, the awesome events that I attended this weekend, God, and the time to just get away and go and fellowship with friends and to be proud of my daughter and my son-in-law for what they are doing in their community and others, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I may have to shut the door. My husband came in on the phone. So if you hear a conversation in the back, that is what it is. Okay. All right. Well, let's read Matthew 24. And let's talk about... We'll get back on Psalms... Um, Maybe tomorrow night, 59 and 60. Maybe tomorrow night, but I just kind of wanted to take a break. And uh, I've just been thinking a lot about Matthew 24 and all the things that are going on that just line up with what we are seeing that's going on. All right. Okay, Matthew 24. And this is Jesus. 
And then we'll read the study part about what they say about this. And we may all learn something new. I think that every time I read the Bible, I learn something new. The Holy Spirit reveals something to me that I did not know before. So then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say unto you, Not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. The signs of the time and the end of the age. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to him, to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Okay, so that's the first thing. Many will come in the name of the Christ and deceive many. Well, we actually have people in this world that are claiming that they are Jesus. And we actually have the Jews in Israel speaking to someone that they claim is the Messiah. So we already have that going on. So let's just check that off the list. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we have um, wars and rumors of wars. There are wars going on right now that we don't know anything about between countries. And there are lots of rumors of wars going on too. So a check on that one too. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. I already have that. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines. There are famines. Pestilences. COVID. And earthquakes. We have plenty of earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my sake. Well, that's happening too in other countries. Christians are being persecuted. Christians are being killed because of their belief, like in Afghanistan. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Well, that is that is going on now. Everyone is offended about everything. They are just they they just choose offense is a choice. They choose to be offended. And there's a lot of betrayal. And especially I see it in the evil because they have no loyalty for each other or love or compassion. They will turn on each other just like that. And we'll hate one another. There are people that hate us for what we believe. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Well, we have many false prophets right now that have risen up and have deceived many that are preaching a prosperity gospel. Uh, you can do whatever you want to, and God still loves you, And um, which God does love us, but he does not love our sin. And because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. There is tons of lawlessness going on. Like I said, in Houston, they were having a vigil, a prayer vigil for probably someone who died recently. And um, a car came by and started shooting people. So that's total lawlessness. And really, uh, reprobate minds. We're seeing reprobate minds. It makes no sense. 
but he who endures to the end shall be saved. So if we endure to the end, we will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So the gospel is being preached to all nations. So we are close to the end. I do not make any predictions of a day or a time because even Jesus said only God knows the day and the time. So this is titled the Great Tribulation. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So we haven't seen that yet. We haven't seen the abomination of desolation, which is when the Antichrist will stand in the holy temple of God and say that he is God. So that is the abomination of the desola of desolation spoken by the da by Daniel the prophet. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. Okay, this is the great tribulation. And one reason why I believe that the rapture happens before the great tribulation is I believe that's who they were talking about. That's what he is talking about. You don't have time to take anything out of your house. If you're on your roof, you're you're going the way you are. And if you're in the field, uh, you're not going to get anything to take either. You're going as you are. And I guess what he's saying is that um, that your flight may not be in winter. Or then the great tribulation is coming. And we think things are bad now. We really look around and we think things are bad and that evil is rampant. And it is. But the great tribulation is going to be a whole lot worse because when the rapture happens, the Holy Spirit of the church is going. Like, it is not going to be here. And so, there is not going to be a restrainer of evil. The Holy Spirit that indwells in the church is not going to be here anymore. And so, the restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit, won't be here either. Which means that evil will abound even more than it is now. Um such as has not been seen, seen, has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Okay, so our days, we are the elect. We are chosen by God. To be in his kingdom through Jesus Christ, his son. So the days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ or there, do not believe it. So many will be deceived by these people that claim that they are Christ. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible even the elect see i have told you beforehand 
So even the elect could be deceived by some of the things that these false Christs and false prophets will do because they're going to do great signs and wonders. Like God does great signs and wonders, they are going to do the same. They are the imitator, but they are not the true God. <clears throat> Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. So, again, false Christ, false prophets, don't fall for it. Because Jesus is coming in the clouds. Jesus is not going to step foot on the earth this time. He already did that. He already came to the earth. He came to the earth. He walked the earth. He walked and talked with his apostles. This is what he's doing. He is talking to them. He is sharing with them what is to come. And he's sharing it with us too. Coming of the Son of Man immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the Son of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all tribes of the earth will mourn. Like everybody is going to mourn that is not part of the kingdom of Jesus. They are going to mourn because they're going to see. They're going to see for themselves who he is. And they're going to know who he is. Okay, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn the parable of this fig tree. When its branch has already come, become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words no means pass away. No one knows the day or hour. So we, we talked about that a while ago. That no one knows. I make no predictions. I see all the signs. We are the children of God and we see all the signs. We can read every bit of this and we can go, wow, some of this hasn't happened, but some of this right now is going on. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son man, of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men shall be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. 
Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So this last part is kind of like a parable, the faithful servant and the evil servant. Who then is faithful is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So that is how that ends. That is how that ends. There is a lot right there to unpack. But there, it, most of what he's talking about is happening right now. We are close. I don't know when, but we are very close to the end. We are very close to Jesus coming and getting his bride. God, through all the things that are going on, is trying to unify the bride of Christ, trying to cleanse the bride of Christ, to remove the sins out of people's lives and out of churches you know god is using this time these hard times because they are hard but they're also blessed times to know that um, we are the ones that have been chosen to help get in this last harvest before the rapture So, let's see what my study Bible says about what Jesus just said. Okay, the destruction of the temple was literally fulfilled in A.D. 70 when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. 24.3, the disciples knew that Jesus was the Messiah. The temple would be destroyed and the kingdom was coming. Since they did not understand other events must also occur, Jesus' crucifixion and death, might, they might have thought the events Jesus mentioned <coughs> would all happen soon. Jesus told them they would see some of these things happen in a comparatively short time. Persecution, abomination at the temple, destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. But he also made it clear that there would be a time lapse before it all came to pass. The events described obviously demanded a longer period to transpire. The coming of false prophets, wars and rumors of wars, kingdom rising against kingdom, famine, earthquakes and the extension of the gospel to the entire world before the kingdom would come literally. The emphasis then would be upon the necessity of faith and obedience, even in times of suffering and sorrow, rather than on a timetable of events. So 24, 4 through 14, Jesus described the overall future of the world that would include natural disasters, persecution, false prophets, hatred of Christians, betrayal, defection, lawlessness, and lack of love. The gospel would be spread despite all this. 2415, abomination of desolation prophesied by the prophet Daniel. A, um, it is a good example of a prophecy with more than one fulfillment. The term refers to the defilement of the temple, especially the altar of sacrifice. The altar was a picture of the sacrifice of Christ as the only atonement for sin. The abomination would cast aside what represented Christ and offer other sacrifices to other gods. Antiochus 
Epiphanes sacked the temple, erected a statue of, to Zeus above the altar, and sacrificed swine, unclean, unclean animals. Jesus predicted that similar events would happen again. Okay, well, the rabbis in Israel um, have been training their priests to do animal sacrifices again. So that might be part of the abomination of desolation. I believe that it would be telling God, well, your son was not a good enough sacrifice. We want to go back to sacrificing animals. And I think that would be a great, great mistake. I don't believe that God would like that. Jesus described events that would occur in Jerusalem in the future. There would be a great tribulation before he would come to set up his physical kingdom. 2430, Jesus' incarnation was relatively quiet and uneventful. Only a few witnesses witnessed the unusual events. Mary and Joseph had angelic visits. A group of shepherds heard an angelic choir. <clears throat> Wise men from another nation saw a phenomenal star. Jesus came as the Lamb of God to make peace between God and man. When he would come again to set up his kingdom, heaven and earth would dramatically announce him, and all would see the display. He would come as king in power and glory and declare war against his enemies. Well, that's in Revelation. 2434, generation may refer to the nation of Israel, suggesting her continued existence until the last days. It may mean, it, it may mean age or time period, referring to the dis, dispensation of grace and it may mean the time period of 30 years if the latter is the case then the text would indicate that these signs would begin to be fulfilled before that generation would end 24 36 through 44 jesus made it clear that while a general time may be determined for his return only the father knows the day and hour Christ's coming will surprise everyone. The believer's responsibility is not to attempt to guess the day, but always be ready. 24, 45 through 51, the servant's assignment was to be faithful in caring for the household and distributing food. Similarly, the priests and teachers had, be, had been given the assignment of caring for the people of Israel. When they failed in their assignment and abused the members of God's household, their punishment was severe. Okay, that is the end of 24. So that was, you know, a lot of people are really heavy. A lot of people think that. Jesus is not coming anytime soon. Well, I'm supposed to read. I look down in my thing and I'm supposed to read this. Uh, second Timothy something. Second Timothy 2. Maybe this is it. Okay. All right. Well, I'm reading Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 3. It says, Perilous times and perilous men. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, 
tra uh, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Okay, so everything, everything that I listed, we have now. We have now, and it says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. We are here. We have every bit of this. Every bit of this behavior goes on every day. And part of that behavior is why we see all these senseless tragedies that go on, these school shootings, these uh, drive-by shootings. All these things are senseless. There's no sense in it. But that's where we are. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as James and Jambres resisted Moses, Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. Now I'm seeing very many people turn against each other that you thought, man, they are, they are so connected. But there is a type of people that if you cross them or if you disagree with them, they will turn on you like that. And we're seeing it. We're seeing it with people that um, are popular. We're seeing it. The man of God, the word of God. But you have carefully followed my doctrine manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Annie Hawk, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord, all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, I'm just going to see if there was any. Um, now okay let's see if there is any study part to this yes okay all right three one this is hurting my this is so heavy it hurts my hand having to hold it differently okay the last days began with christ incarnation included Timothy's day and would continue until Christ's return. This period would be characterized by sinful attitudes and deeds that would continually permeate society. Which we see that right now. We see all of this permeating our society. Um, it talks about gullible women is used only here in the New Testament in extra biblical literature. The term is often a contemptuous 
diminutive. The women are also described as loaded down with sins um, by various lust, indicating their vulnerability to the false teachers. These women continually sought greater knowledge, but the very falseness of their teaching left them in ignorance of the truth. And it says Janus and John Brace, according to a Jewish tradition, were religious impostors who would be publicly exposed in their folly. Uh, 316. Scripture was God-breathed. God communicated to individuals the specific truths. The Holy Spirit superintended this process so that there were no errors in the original writings. This written word is both infallible it cannot be broken, and because it is God's word, authoritative. Um, God's word is not only inspired, it is also profitable. Its usefulness is seen in four areas. Teaching people God's truth, reproving or rebuking those who are sinning, correcting those who are in error, and training people to walk in God's righteous ways. That was all very good study material. And then I remembered I wanted to read for things that I wrote down during my quiet time. I went way far. Went back into the Old Testament. It's Second Thessalonians. I wanted to read about Jesus coming. Oh, there it is. First Thessalonians. The day of the Lord. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Okay, we already read that earlier. Um, and read earlier. <laughs> have I already forgotten what we read? Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll remember in a minute. We just read it. Oh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. We just read it in Matthew 24. Uh, for when they say peace and safety, I don't know whether you've checked out the UN's new mascot, but its name is Peace and Safety. And it looks like the beast that uh, is described in Revelation. I don't know. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. I wouldn't want a beast like that to be my mascot. But what they chose, name is Peace and Safety. And then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in the darkness. We are not the children of darkness. We are the children of the light. So that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not, the, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk by, at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And as a helmet of hope for salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. And that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you, are also, you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, but 
at the peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice also always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. And all the brethren with a holy kiss, which is on the cheek, with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. All right, that's not what I wanted to read, but that is, it actually goes better than what I wanted to read. I'm going to write all this down and I can get it. And so I'm sorry I've been AWOL for a couple of days, but I had a really busy weekend. But now I'm back. Uh, Matthew 24. And... First Thessalonians. So maybe as you watch the news, I don't watch the news really. I don't watch the mainstream news. They're just all Republicans. Instead of Instead of speaking of the news, they're either complaining about Trump or the Republicans or they don't agree with us. And, you know, instead of giving us the truth about the news, they're always slanting it to where it's not true. So I don't watch that. I don't waste my time with that. I, I get most of my news on YouTube. I have some people that I trust on YouTube to give me the truth. So, I'm always seeking the truth. I hope you are too. All right, I am not going to read what I wrote today because I ended up reading a whole lot more than what I was going to read. So, I'm going to do a really... I need to go and feed my child who has not been eating much lately because he's had tummy issues. But I think they're better. So, I'm hoping he'll eat. So I'm doing the E-band. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1.16. I am not ashamed of the gospel. So the first color is gold. The gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. God, Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So we have the black with the white question mark. The dark color represents sin which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. God separates us, sin, sorry, sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So the first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? And the red color 
represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinful life, sinless life. Jesus, Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. We don't have to be. Because Jesus paid it all. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash, wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Okay, back to that. I got ahead of myself. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? And if you would like to do that, if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, oh, that looks more green than red. Hmm. On my other camera, sorry. Sorry, Facebook has it going on. This, these colors are, I don't know. Anyway, so if you would like to do that, let's pray. At least my hair's not red. I don't know. Okay. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, well, moving on to the next color, which is green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. We have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love people. And then the next one is the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. And then the next one is the praying hands. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. And then we have the water symbol. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then we have the fellowship hands. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And then we have the world in the cross. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins. When you trust in him, tell as many people as you can. So if you did say that prayer and you accepted Jesus into your, to be your savior, 
and welcome to the kingdom family of God. Angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, well it is time to do God's blessing and to get off of here. And I'm not going to read what I wrote um, with this song. If you want to, you can go and listen to the song and read that. And I may read it tomorrow. I don't know. It depends. I might write something else tomorrow. You never know. So this is God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And that's number 6, 24 through 26. And someday, I'll have it memorized. I don't know when. I can't memorize things like I used to. All right. Well, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Tuesday. And much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.